And welcome back to another episode of Mugen Masterclass. Today we are working on the S letters. That is screen bound, self state, sprite priority, state type set, sound pan, stop sound, and super pause. Now to start with screen bound. Specifies whether or not the player's movement should be constrained to the screen or not. Also determines the camera should follow the player or not. The result of the controller is valid for only one tick. Meaning, your trigger has to be a constant. I'm going to do it here in the negative three so we can get a good view of it. Um, I know this code's kind of jank for some reason, so I'm using it one. So is my character screen bound? Yes, this means I cannot leave the screen. So just to showcase quickly. Fight. I cannot leave the screen. Now if I set it to zero, I'm not bound, which means I can walk off the screen. Fight. If I have moved camera set to one, that means the camera should follow me. I've, Fight. In my experience, I've had it not follow me, like right now. So. I'm not sure why move camera may function, may not function, but that's how the value works. To One is going to keep you locked on the screen, zero is going to let you pass off the screen. Why would you use this? You would use this in a custom state where you're knocking the opponent off the edge of the screen for like a cinematic move, or like in Marvel vs. Capcom where you send the enemy flying across the way. Uh, this way you are not screen bouncing, you're off the screen and the camera's staying on player 2 as they're flying and then your character will hop back in. <clears throat> so that's what screen mount does. Next code is self state. Like change state, except this changes the player back to their state when they're in a custom state. So if I put Kung Fu's man in a custom state, which I have here, basic custom state. Fight. Actually, no, I can't use that one. I have to use this one. Fight. If I put April in a custom state, right? <laughs> she's in a custom state, she's playing the animation. Indefinitely. This turns yellow if you're in a custom state, your debug. Now, she's stuck there because I don't have anything, any other codes in there. So now if I put a change state, what happens is she's going to change state to zero with control, the problem is it's not her states. It's Kung Fu Man states. So now she's gonna have Kung Fu Man states for Fight. things she's not supposed to have. So she can't crouch, right? April cannot crouch. I have three buttons that do nothing, A, B, and C. Because X, Y, and Z do things, right? So now when I put them in a custom state, and she gets out, suddenly she can crouch. As you see the debug, it's still yellow. That means the player, April, never left the custom state properly. They have control to move, but they're not in their own state. I can't even run with her right now. Like, run doesn't exist for her. So that's why you, know, you do not use a chain state in a custom state. That's when you use a self state. Self state will send the player back to their self state. Uh, time equals 50. <clears throat> Center back to uh, stand. Fight. So now when Kung Fu Man kicks her, <coughs> there. So now it's yellow. She's in a custom state. 50 seconds later, back to her own states. She can run and do that apparently. She cannot crouch anymore, and she can do all of her attacks and stuff accordingly. That's self-state. <clears throat> so if you put your enemy in a custom state, you have to give them a self-state eventually to go back to their own state. Otherwise they're going to stay stuck in a custom state. Alternatively, you can hit them and they will fall out of it. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
Okay, that's soft state. Next is sprite priority. Changes the sprite's priority. You have a value of negative 5 to positive 5. Your sprite priority is stated in your state depths right here, sprite priority 2. Normally when you're attacking you have a higher priority, 2. When you're not attacking it's normally 0, as stand here is. So since this is a higher number than the other one, I should appear, my sprites should appear Fight. on top of uh, Kung Fu Man. Fight. <laughs> As you can see, my hand is above his sprite. Now, if I put mine to a negative, negative two, my punch is going to appear behind him, below him, behind him. See? So my hands are behind him. The only reason it appears in front is because hit deaths tend to make these things act funny. So now, using a sprite priority code, right, I can use a ignore hit pause set to one my priority is going to be negative two and my sprite priority is one so i'm constantly going to be placed behind the enemy player and the hit death the hit stun it's not the hit stun is not going to affect me Fight. see behind still behind all the way through now why would you use this right you would use this for a move that involves something moving around the player. For instance, if I had a visual effect, say I'm doing a tornado kick, right? And I have an effect on my character. I can have it so when the foot is in the front of the screen facing me, the effect's above. When the character is facing the back and I see the back of the character, the effect is below. So this way, it looks like the lightning is always on his feet, front and back, front and back. Or an alternate example is you can have objects circling around the player. Quick cut. So, like this character, Todd Ingram, um, this is how you would use sprite priority. Notice the vegetables are in back of him, and when they come around, they're in the front of him. So, they're circling him basically. Lots of vegetables each of Eddie's kids. So that's what you use sprite priority for. Next is state type set. <clears throat> Changes the current state type and move type. Useful for states that go from the ground into the air, etc. Uh, let's see. Kung Fu Man has a Kung Fu knee. Right? And this doesn't really follow the same thing as that. So I can't use an example. But basically, your state type controllers are right here. Type is stand, crouch, or air, or lay down, lie down. Move type is A for attack, I for idle, and H for get hits, meaning you're in a hurt state. Physics is stand, crouch, air. Physics is important because it affects how your characters move. Standing has a friction, meaning if you're moving at a velocity, the friction of stand will slow you down to a stop. Same thing with crouch. Air has its own velocities. Air is going to send you down to the ground and it's automatically have a change state. So if your physics is A, you are going to change to state 52, which is jump land. If your physics is N or C and you're in the air, not N, sorry, if your physics is uh, S or C and you're in the air, you're going to fall through the floor. Uh, if your physics is N, you have no physics, meaning you're relying strictly on vel sets, right? So, in my example here, what I'm going to do is change it from a standing uh, attack with standing physics to a time equals ten to an air idle with a physics a. He's going to sink into the ground basically. Well, he can't even sink it to the ground because he's changing to, to jump land state 52 right there. So let's see. Can you see it here? Not really. 
but that's what a state type set would do. It lets you reset the the state types for the state def uh, whenever you want to. When would you use this? If you want to make it so after you uh, attack, actually here, let me show you with the standing light punch, right? This is the long frame of the attack. So what frame is this? This is frame three, so frame four, okay. Now I'm gonna disable it for a second. Now, here's why this is interesting. If I attack, you see how long the player is able to guard? Until the attack is over, right? But let's say I want him to go idle at 26 ticks. So, time equals 26. He's become idle. He won't be attacking anymore. So, player two is gonna be able to walk away at a faster time. Maybe bad example. Let's slow it down more. Fight. Normally, player two will have to block until the entire state's over. But because it switches back to idle, they're able to walk away before the state is finished. And that's what state type set does. It lets you rearrange your type physics and uh, move type on the fly whenever you wanted to. Next is sound pan. Changes the panning of a currently playing sound. This controller may be continually triggered to smoothly move a sound across the sound field or to have a sound follow the player. So <clears throat> I have a sound that I added to the character. Um, I have to use a play sound first before it can work. And for what it's worth, um, you can sound pan separately, or you could do it in the uh, play sound code right here. But I'm not gonna do it there. Uh, for this to work, you need to have a sound play. I'll have sound 1000 play. Volume is gonna be 100 <laughs> and channel. So these channels are important. Your character has 16 channels of sounds. Channel zero is reserved strictly for character voices. It's coded in a way so that if your character is hit and they are talking, it's gonna it's gonna end the the voice sample. It's gonna cancel it. Whereas if your character is talking on channel one to sixteen and you hit them, the voice sample will continue playing even though they're not doing that move anymore. So use channel zero for voices and. 1 to 16 for sounds. So I'm going to use channel 5. So the pan sound, right? I'm going to use a continuous trigger. And the channel, I have to match it up. So I'm going to control this one. So channel 5. So the way this works, right? It's very interesting. So ABS pan, that's absolute pan, I think. Absolute pan is relative to the stage, right? Regardless of where I am in the stage, it's always going to appear in the stage. If I put it at zero, it's the center of the stage. I don't know if you can hear this. Fight. Okay, so now I'm going to put 300, and you're going to hear it on the right side speaker only. Fight. Now, if I put negative 300, you hear it on the left side speaker only. Fight. Okay. So, absolute pan would pan regarding the stage itself, on what side of the stage you want it to play on. The other option is pan. And I think you could just put pan to 1. I don't know if you can use another value. But I've noticed that if pan is set to one, wherever the character is in play, the sound is gonna come from the character's Fight. location. So if I'm on the left, compared to the right, Fight. to the center, 
So that's how pan works. Pan sticks to the character's location. Absolute pan is relative to the stage itself. Zero being the center. So that is sound pan. Next, stop sound. Stops any sound which is playing on the specified channel. Uh, important thing, if sound channel is negative one, then all sounds are stopped, including those belonging to other players. I've never had it do it to other players, but I'm going to have low punch, light punch be the sound and heavy punch is going to be the stop sound. And I need to stop the channel, right? So I'm going to do channel five and I'll be right away. So now when I light punch, you hear music. When I heavy punch, it'll stop. <laughs> okay, and if I want, I can use negative one, as it said, to remove every sound from every channel. Apparently to both players. I, I didn't even know that. And the last thing today is super pause. Freezes the gameplay, it darkens the screen. While the player is frozen, no time passes. Used for dramatic pause during start of hyper attacks. Now, I have to admit, I have not use super pause in years and i'll tell you why we're gonna go to the kung fu palm right now we're gonna do a super pause trigger let's trigger this right away how long are we gonna do a super pause for this works in ticks so 60 ticks is one second so we'll do 60. animation any animation i put here is gonna be from the fight effects dot air file located in the data folder if you want to use your own effects, you press F, S, you press S, and then whatever number effect that is. I don't have any effects, so I'm just gonna use something from the fight, um, fight effects air file. Uh, what sound do you wanna play? Uh, let's play that funky music I had going on. Where do you want the spark, the animation to play on the character? Let's have it play above his head, right? Ah, 100. Do I want to move during this time? Move time allows me, the player, to move during the pause. So I have 60 seconds that I can move and, you know, if I'm animating, like pulling back or lunging forward, like I can use this to that. If I have it at zero, I don't move. Everything freezes, I don't move. Darken if I want to make the background darker. P2 defense moles if I want to multiply or manipulate the enemy's defense. So if I'm comboing them, I can use this to increase their defense. So I do less damage. Power add, because we're doing a super, I'm gonna lose power, so I'm putting negative 1000. You could put negative whatever number, or even positive a number if you want. You could be a little crazy with it. Um, then you have unhittable. Unhittable makes the character unhittable during the pause time. So now when I do the Kung Fu Palm, it's gonna super pause. Oh, that's not it. That's something from before. Okay, let's move this to a state where it's not uh, <laughs> gonna do that. <clears throat> now, if you noticed, this I'll wait for the music to stop. If you notice, the screen is paused for 60 ticks. It's playing animation three, this thing, above my head, which is that position. The music played. Uh, I cannot move because I moved time zero. The screen got darker. His defense is probably the same. I lost the power of 1,000 gauge because, you know, 3,000 is a meter. And I'm assuming I'm unhittable. Yeah, I'm unhittable right there. <laughs> so that's how super pause works now i don't use this the reason why is i like to have control <clears throat> of my super pauses so here's an example using envy again looking at my super pause here i i have it like this so i can copy and paste it i have a pause code which lets me you know pause everything i'm pausing the background uh, i can only move for four ticks because that's for the super i have my play sound 
I have my background pal effects. I have my explod, which is the effect that I'm seeing on screen. Other a bunch of explods to happen during it. And this way I have more control over it because the basic super pause doesn't give you a lot of control. You still might have to do explods and other stuff, but I like breaking it down into its own little sections so I have full control. And another thing, uh, darken. Yeah, so darken. Um, I don't like the shade of blue that it does. Like, it just. I just don't like the way it looks. Uh, the reason why also, I, I like to using BG PAL effects because then I could control the background color to be whatever I want it to be, right? So, um, for example, I can put negative 128, and then negative zero, yeah. So this will be kind of a bluish background. Bye. See? If I want to do a full, like, darker gray background, I could just put all negative whatever across the board. Bye. See, so this is not like a, a, a weird um, pasty blue. Everything's just darker. And uh, that, that's why I prefer using a BG PAL effect. So then I control the intensity of it all instead of it being one solid blue that I have no control over. Bye. See, I can even make it light and everything, or whatever color I want to make it. So I believe uh, that's it for this video. Yeah. One thing to note here, if you have a pause controller and then you use a super pause, the super pause is going to uh, supersede the pause controller and the pause controller is just going to turn off. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Come back again for another lesson and subscribe. Let's go get some cheese back.